Welcome to the third in our series of interviews with the winners of the Association for Business Psychology Excellence Awards. We'll be hearing from Steve Apps, partner at Persona Partnership, a newly appointed chair of the ABP who was the 2015 award winner of Excellence in Training and Development. My name is Steve Apps and I'm a partner in Persona Partnership which is a small boutique HR consultancy and we had a project with a company called Thoroughgood which is a business intelligence consultancy. What they do is they help mostly multinational corporates to analyse and make sense of the vast amounts of data that exist within the companies, to ask questions of that data and to make business decisions based on the back of it. They have partnerships with some of the large IT analysis firms such as Microsoft um, and uh, they also wanted to ensure that collaboration between themselves was strong. What Thoroughgood came to us looking for was a way of further attracting clients and retaining existing clients. And what they had received client feedback that whilst the technical capabilities of their consultants were great, um, sometimes the communication uh, abilities was, could have been better. Uh, so what they wanted to do was to look at the impact of their consultants, look at how it could be improved, but not just that, not just for the sake of it, but to do that to drive sales and drive client retention. Um, the problem I was presented with was uh, how do we increase sales, how do we attract new clients and retain existing clients. Essentially that was the issue and it was one that they were working on internally and they'd done, it was based on some client feedback that they'd got that said look your consultants are really great technically uh, but from a communication perspective perhaps there could be some improvement. So what Thoroughgood did was they'd already done a training needs analysis and looked at, well, do we need to do sales training, negotiation skills training, presentation skills training, uh, consultancy skills, like, what is it? And what they realised was there's an underlying need to improve impact which would apply in all of those settings that they find themselves either with clients, with partners or in their collaborative workings with each other. I went right back to fundamental um, training cycle, which I learned when I was doing my CIPD qualifications, which talks about you do a training needs analysis, you do a strong design, you deliver it, and then you evaluate it. And look, if I'm honest with you, I had this award in mind. I was thinking, look, how do I design an intervention that's likely to win an award? And of course, actually what that does is it makes you be far more rigorous about how you design the whole thing. So I went to the client with some, you know, a summary of what they were saying their need was, and I put in some various designs of how they could approach it. And I had, you know, an expensive bells and whistles design down to, you know, if you've got constraints, here's what we can do. And I was asked, you know, what do you recommend? And I said, well, look, if you really want to have impact with this, then you need to do it properly. So here's what I recommend. So what we did was we did a two-day program. Um, but before that, we spent 45 minutes on the phone with each of the delegates. And we went through a pilot process. So the first set of delegates we used to establish what were their individual learning needs around the area of personal impact. And then what we realised was, in order to make this really impactful, we had to base it in their real business. So what we asked those delegates to do was to write some business cases that replicated you know, the key critical moments they interact with a client. So it might be an elevator pitch, um, a, they meet them at a marketing seminar, they have a phone call with them where they're establishing needs, they do put together a proposal and they're testing that proposal with the client and so on and so forth. So we took those critical moments and we replicated them during the training. 
What we did during the training as well is we focused, because you have to in communication, not just on the intellectual side, but also the physical and emotional side. Meaning, yes, we covered some theories and some psychological principles that underpin communication, but also we spent a lot of time on the physical side, the body and the voice and how you use it um, to get the best impact, and also how you add emotion into your communication. So, for example, if you want to portray a feeling of pride, you start with that feeling. You know, I'm, I'm proud of this project, and if I just think about that feeling of pride, then that has a chance of coming across to you. And that, that's, a, for me, a really important principle of communication that we were, and a psychological principle of communication that we were using as part of this pro project. So the first thing is that the client brief was very much, we want to increase sales. And we want to do that by improving the impact of our consultants. So, so the initial objectives were extremely clear. Mm. The brief was clear. So then what I needed to do was follow you know, the Kirkpatrick model, the well-known model of evaluation, to see whether that happened or not. So I had to design an intervention that was fit for those objectives. Then, of course, we did the happy sheets, and we know that they're you know, effective to an extent, but they're limited. So, what did we do? First of all, we had each participant uh, have individual action planning sessions with a trainer, and they were tasked with feeding back to their manager, the HR manager, and us that they'd uh, uh, committed to those actions, and those development actions were incorporated in their performance reviews. So we were able to evaluate it as part of the performance review process. Um, also, we did a six-month questionnaire, and we had some particular factors such as um, uh, depth of conviction, uh, how inspiring your communication is, um, impact on voice projection, um, and so on and so forth. And so we were able to measure, and we got about, on a 10-point scale, on average, about a two-point increase between before the programme and six months later. And also, we were able to, although it's, you know, not, you can't directly relate it to turnover and, and profit and so on. We at least looked at that. So a year-on-year -year increase for Thoroughgood of 20%, both in terms of turnover and gross profit. So you know, we were able to at least get a sense that there was some link between the programme and the broader business benefit. This was a learning and development intervention. So, as I said, I went right back to basic principles and actually all I did was just apply those basic principles effectively. So, how often do I hear we have to evaluate this, but it never happens? And all I did was ensure that a clear, rigorous evaluation process was built in at the beginning and there was some budget allocated for it, so it actually had a chance to happen as opposed to it just being something that gets missed off at the end. And then everything was peppered with psychological principles and models. So applying a scientific approach to the end-to-end -end project is an important psychological principle and one that I applied, or that we applied, because there were three of us involved in this project. Equally, using some um, well-grounded psychological theories and principles as part of the design, such as things like the ladder of inference, which is a well-known model for digging down in communication, and some work on the fight-flight response, which is important when you've got a stressed client in front of you for how you manage communication, made sure that psychology underpinned everything that we were doing. So, uh, I'm a partner in Persona Partnership, which is a small boutique HR consultancy that focuses on actually writing and selling assessment exercises and also has a strong learning and development background. Um, we've been working with Thoroughgood for over 10 years, probably closer to 15 years, uh, mostly helping with actually graduate recruitment and assessment and across uh, you know, India, the UK and the US. And by the way, this program happened in all three locations, or with people from all three locations. Um, 
and uh, I'm also uh, chair of the Association of Business Psychology now, so you may have seen uh, another video with uh, Clodagh O'Reilly, the previous chair, so well done Clodagh on an excellent video. Um, and I was lucky enough to um, you know, twice now win awards as part of this, um, and now a chance to become chair of this you know, great association which really is trying to you know, champion the use of business psychology.